All right, you see me, I see you, so I would say let's kick it off. And welcome to the world's first immersive media 5G consumer entertainment demo day. We're really... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Crowd is going wild already here in Bonn. Perfect. <laughs> So we're really here to celebrate a pioneering virtual journey, especially in those extraordinary times that we're facing right now. I would like to welcome our guests really from all over the world. Welcome to our guests here at the Deutsche Telekom headquarters in Bonn, Germany. And of course, welcome to all of you that joined really from all over the world here today on our platform, on our live stream. Augmented reality, gaming, esports, or music. What impact will the super fast 5G networks with the short reaction time will have in these areas? What ideas are startups working on? And what new applications can we expect? Well, to find out the answers to these questions, that's the reason why we came together. So also from my side, welcome to the 5G um, consumer entertainment demo day. Um, so sending definitely digital love to all of you <laughs> out there, and I'm very excited about that, what's going to happen now. I'm here with my colleague Pia from the Deutsche Telekom. How are you? <laughs> Good. Happy to be here. Pia, <laughs> and I am not, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I think, uh, Pia, I think you're in the family way. You're pregnant. That was a secret up to now, but well, all right, yeah, I get, yeah. All right, if so they thanks for breaking know, the news, internationally known now, yes. <laughs> you are, so when is the date of birth? Two months from today. Two months? Yep. In case you have any reactions or something. I'm a doctor, you're, no, just kidding, uh, I cannot but, help. But, but you're ready, you're ready. I am ready. Would it be a, a, a boy or a girl? A boy. It's a boy, it will be a boy, <laughs> that's great. So, what, we can, what can we expect for today, Pia? Well, I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, I, I was gonna do this event by, my, by myself, but then, you know, there were a little, Anxious in case anything happened to me, so I got some support here from Amius. <laughs> Amius is on my side. So now I understand <laughs> why they asked me, do you have kind of a, a, a doctor experiences? Yes, you I do, do, right? Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> so Amius from the media group RTL. Yeah. And he's not only a doctor, you know, but he actually also has some experience in the field of startups, etc. because he's actually the host of the German TV show Höhle der Löwen, which is the German version of Shark Tank. I'm pretty sure you know that. So he has experience with startups, investments, innovations, so happy to have you here with me. In Welcome, the jungle, Amy. the mighty <laughs> jungle, where the lion sleeps tonight. And besides lions, <laughs> we also have the topic of 5G today. 5G is a pretty hot topic right now. I mean, there is no tech news or anything that go without it. And today we don't want to talk about the technicalities or the licenses or anything, but we really want to talk about the usage. So what kind of products can we expect from 5G? What can it offer and what can it, how can it actually make your life better, more fun, more entertaining? So that's why we came here today. And uh, the response to this 5G um, consumer entertainment program was amazing because more than 700 teams from Europe, Australia, USA, all around the world, they wanted to be a part of this uh, Demo day, but only seven, only seven made it. And uh, what else can we say? So, so the 5G accelerator is being carried out by uh, Quake Capital. The key partner is Hubraum. Uh, that's the incubator of the Deutsche Telekom. Mediengruppe RTL Deutschland is the main sponsor. But bef before I say too much, why is it not that the partners of the 5G Consumer Entertainment Day, uh, Demo Day, present themselves and introduce themselves? And that's why here, they are. 5G is here now and will change our consumer world. We decided to shape the future by bringing together the best ecosystem of partners. Hubraum, tech incubator of Deutsche Telekom, is bringing early stage startups and the leading European telco together. Hubraum sparks innovation transfer and creates collaboration opportunities for startups and Deutsche Telekom. Quake, a leading venture capital fund and startup accelerator with offices in the US and Europe. 
Quake Accelerator programs recruit teams from all around the world and take them to the next level. The media group RTL, the leading German provider of video content, with a vast portfolio of channels and online offerings, media group RTL address a broad spectrum of target groups with one objective to always strive to provide the best content available for each and every viewer. The program is also supported by Mobile Edge X, Erster FC Köln, SK Gaming, Deloitte, Dudash and NRW Invest. With this great support in the past months, seven rockstar startups have worked intensively on seven fascinating applications that show us the new possibilities in a life with super fast 5G. Welcome the future. Welcome it now with the 5G consumer entertainment program. Wow. Yeah. So here in Bonn, we get a big applause for all the partners and all the sponsors. I think they're probably adding a virtual one as well. So thanks to all those companies that support, supported the program and actually made it possible. And maybe one more word to the program, not just today is carried out in a virtual way, but actually the entire acceleration program was carried out virtually over many countries. So I think that's actually pretty much an achievement by itself. So let's now come to an overview on what awaits you today. And I think we will see an agenda as well, exactly. So let's take a look at the agenda. We're right now obviously in the opening and welcoming phase. And we will first start with an introductory speech by Dr. Thorsten Brod from Deutsche Telekom, followed by Bernd Reichert, who is the CEO of the Mediengruppe RTL. And then we will come to really the heart and soul of today to the pitches of our startups. Um, and also here we have a hybrid event, so you see us obviously here, but the startups will be zoomed in uh, on a virtual way here and also be, be ready for Q&A via, via this way. Um, we will end the official part by an impulse by Quake Investment and then, of course, one of the highlights of today, we will uh, have a voting on who will be the winning startup for the best 5G pitch today, followed by an intensive round of digital networking and getting to know each other. Right, so... There's a lot of stuff going on for today. In Germany, I would say, like, we ha I, now I have a Gänsehaut. A Gänsehaut, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you probably also need a little break, right? So yeah. for us to take a deep breath now, let's waste no time and give the word to our first speaker here. You already heard it. Uh, one of the key partners is Deutsche Telekom, more specifically Hubraum, the incubator of Deutsche Telekom. And of course, that's right now a pretty exciting phase for us here with the entire 5G, first the licensing uh, going on, but of, now, of course now the commercialization of 5G. And we still want to learn what can we actually do with 5G and what are the next steps to take. And I'm pretty sure our first guest will talk about that. Um, Dr. Thorsten Brod is the SVP for commercial management. He's responsible for the private customer portfolio here in Bonn at Deutsche Telekom. Fixed line products and also cellular products, obviously, including 5G, round up the portfolio. And further, he's also responsible for innovations such as consumer IoT, voiceification, and gaming. So, Thorsten, stage is yours. Very warm welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. To give me the opportunity to be here and speak about 5G, what 5G means for Germany, and also uh, the meaning of that program, the Alex acceleration program that we've just launched, or that we've just finished. I, actually, we are on a journey. 5G is a journey that has started more than two years ago. Everyone who reads the press knows the bidding for the licenses, paying a lot of money for the licenses was one of the first big steps. Then we launched the first tariffs and the first commercial offering back in Berlin with the press conference. Uh, we've been at the last IFA uh, that happened and introduced a couple of more innovations of 5G to the, um, uh, to the market. So that's a journey, a 
more than a two years journey already now, and it will be a journey for a couple of years into the future. And I'm really excited that we have been able to attract so many startups and so many innovation with that program here that brings some of the good experiences to our customer. What I want to show you today is a little bit what we've done and what we are doing with 5G in Germany. But first of all, I have to say thank you to the ones who made that happen. The trailer, but also you mentioned a lot of companies that have been involved. First of all, every startup that has applied and to, took part in the program, uh, a big thank you for that. But a big thank you also for Hubraum, the colleagues from partnering here internally at Deutsche Telekom, the colleagues or the partners at RTL, everyone who was on the table and uh, made this program happen. A big thank you from my side. We were happy to fund it a little bit and kick it off. 5G, as I said, is a big investment. It's a key, if not one of the key investments of last year with the licenses, but also the network build and the network operation. The network is key for our competitive edge. You know if you read the press, there's no operator in Germany that is more advanced in the network. We have the best network, and in terms of coverage on 5G, we had 50% population coverage. We're going to increase that this year even further. And when you look at the competition where they are, they're not there where we are. Vodafone is behind, but also the uh, Telefonica guys just announced uh, the going live with their network where we've been here in operations for a year. Network is a key thing. Devices is the next big thing. And the tariffs on top is, is another one. And the use cases that come across with such a program here are important to us. How did we do that in Germany? First of all, we talked about the good things that we've done. We've invested a large part of our marketing budget into best network perception. Yeah? 5G as a key claim, but also as a key um, uh, brand icon, as you can see it, T5G was all over in the video clip. It was all over Germany in, uh, on, the, on the billboards, in the streets. And so we have invested a lot into the network leadership perception with 5G. The key topic in, uh, in the G, in the 5G, or in our campaign is as if you were there. Yeah? The network disappears. The network becomes so good that we can talk, that we can video conference, that we can game um, over distance. And I think the last half year showed us how critical good networks are. Yeah? The lockdown and the COVID crisis showed us that it's an, um, an, an elementary part of our day-to-day -day life to be on a good network. And if the network is so good that you do not realize that there is a network, but we can be there as if we were there in the same room or in the same apartment or in the same space, that is when you are on a good network. And that's the key uh, topic of our advertising. And I think we have a film um, that we can show at that moment uh, how we advertise 5G in Germany. Das G in 5G steht für das Gefühl, dass nichts mehr zwischen uns steht. Es steht für gemeinsam ganz nah, gemeinsam intensiver, gemeinsam schneller, für ganz weit draußen und mittendrin. Grenzenlos und gleichzeitig für gemeinsam mehr verbunden. Seid dabei, wenn mit 5G nichts mehr zwischen uns steht. Im größten 5G-Netz Deutschlands. So, it, was, it, it has been said, the biggest 5G network in Germany, that's already what I pointed out, 50% of population covered, and we're increasing that until the end of the year even further. The next thing is you need to have good devices. Yeah? We've advertised and we've also supported the prices of high-end devices because, unfortunately, these devices become more and more expensive yeah, with every generation on the network. But um, we are trying to help our customers and the consumers in Germany to make uh, devices affordable. That's part of the campaign. Everyone knows that next week we will have, or we will see, every one of us will see a keynote from Cupertino. And everyone who read the headlines, high speed 
yeah, knows what it's all about. Also, that device will uh, incorporate 5G and allow the experience of the best network um, also in Germany. I'm really looking forward to that um, event and to have it in my hands for the first time. Devices and networks and tariffs, there's all, only one part of the equation. You also have to make it, uh, make it possible for the consumers and for people to experience what the future can look like. And that is what we've done with such use cases. Yeah, you see a couple of them here illustrated on that slide. We brought a flying virtual dragon on into shops virtual games like air hockey or basketball. Uh, we brought that to certain events and locations also in our shops. We have in Dusseldorf, that's what you see in the uh, top left corner, a big photo booth, a, a box there yeah, where you can take a 360 um, photo of you. And within seconds, we create a digital twin of you, an avatar that can dance like Michael Checks nor anyone else, yeah, like I can't dance, but your avatar and digital twin can dance. All these kind of high-tech experiences, we brought it to our shops, and they make it possible for the consumers to see a glimpse of the future, yeah? to see a little bit what would be possible with super fast and super reactive networks like the 5G network will be. And we are also investing into a couple of uh, new businesses. What I've brought here is Magenta Music, but also Magenta Gaming. And Magenta Music is an interesting case. Already for a couple of years, we are producing events, music events, concerts, live events. We are also bringing that to Magenta TV, making that available to more people that cannot go to the event. And now with the lockdown, many, many concerts could not happen anymore. And what we've done here in that example with Wacken, everyone who knows Wacken knows that it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, heavy metal and rock event in Germany. We've produced a digital version. Yeah? Instead of locking that down too, we've made it possible that that event can happen. And 11 million people viewed the music that was played in Wacken. Yeah? Although it's a hard time for concert makers and, event, uh, and events at the moment, the networks and the digitalization are a way out of that. And I think that's a very nice and very good example that we brought to life here. The, the second example here is Magenta Gaming. The gaming world will change. It will change a lot. Like Netflix has changed the video industry or Spotify has changed the music industry, some players in the world will change the gaming industry. You, don't, you do not have to buy a console anymore. You do not have to buy a game anymore. You just pay a fixed price a month, like seven euros for Magenta Gaming, and you have a huge library of over 100 games at your fingertips, at any device, at any place in the world where you are. This is only possible because you have a super fast network that connects you with the streaming servers of, that, uh, of, of, of the gaming uh, library uh, that, we are, um, that we are offering here. That has just started. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we went live with the commercial offering, and on Sunday, we started the first advertising campaign on Magenta Gaming. And I think 5G is going to bring us a lot of more opportunities in that space. But one thing is that we don't know. We all don't know what kind of future we will have on 5G. Rewinding back 10 years ago when we were launched LTE or 4G networks, no one could tell what, be, what would be the next, um, the next uh, startups that become successful. Yeah, who would have predicted that Instagram is a key killer use case 10 years ago? No one. Yeah? And so we don't know what 5G will bring. But what I'm really sure of and what I know, that the network is critical for that innovation. Yeah, because it brings a new latency, new reaction time, and more speed and connectivity to everyone. So I would invite everyone in 10 years' time to come back here again. And we look back into the past and say, what happened on the 5G network? And I think we will all be surprised, and we will all live in a better future. Thank you very much. All right.
Thank you, Thorsten. So face-to-face -face applause, virtual applause for sure as well. <laughs> so we'll meet here again in 10 years, right? And who knows, maybe we will meet the next Instagram today. We maybe. Thorsten, you said um, that 50% of the people in Germany, are, we, we bring access already to 50% of, of the people here. What are the next steps? What's the strategy of Deutsche Telekom with regards to the rollout, etc.? In, in terms of the network, yeah, we are, yeah. We are striving to cover more and more parts of the country, more and more parts of the population. We'll go up to 70% uh, towards the end of the year. But what we will also do is we upgrade the network onto higher speed levels. Yeah? All those investments that we've done on the licenses with the high frequency, we will build the antenna. So we, you will have more coverage and at the same time more power and more performance in the network. And we will always try to keep an edge uh, compared to the competition. <laughs> All right, sounds, sounds promising. And then uh, one last question also, question also concerning today. What are your thoughts of this entire acceleration program of the last months? Why is that so important for us? For us, of, that of, is, I always mean Deutsche Telekom. Yeah, that, <laughs> that is, also, it's all about surprises. Yeah, we don't know the future. We cannot predict. And we, as a company, or I with my team, we cannot um, invest in many, 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 many use cases. But I'm sure that they are important for consumers. Yeah? People want to play better games. People want to have better music experience. People want to be entertained. And such a program gives you the opportunity, as you said, to invite 700 uh, of innovative minds, innovative companies, companies that are striving for better customer experience to one program. Yeah? And that's a power that you can unleash and a creativity that you um, can unleash that is only possible with an extant uh, ecosystem and partners, because that's not our core. Yeah. Yeah, that we build the networks, we sell the devices, and we make the network possible. But inviting those is just surprisingly and refreshing and an impulse for everyone. And at the end, at the end of the day, I hope it's a nice and uh, good experience also for all our consumers. So it's just uh, great. Cool. All right, Thorsten, but COVID doesn't allow me to be here with two guys on stage, so <laughs> I have to send you off now. Thank you very much Thank for your you inspiring very much. impulse. Thanks for being here and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Tell me, Mero, who is next? I can see him, and you will see him in a couple of seconds. So we're about to continue with our program. Um, after graduating from university, he started his uh, career in sports rights advertising sales at Ufa Sports in Hamburg in 2001. In 2003, he became marketing manager for Sports 5. That's the sports rights agency in Madrid. After 10 years of being successful outside of his homeland, he came back to Germany uh, as managing director in 2013 for uh, Vox and was appointed a member of the Mediengruppe RTL Deutschland uh, Management Board. He's a good friend of mine, and by the way, he's the reason why I'm successful on TV screen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome the CEO of the Mediengruppe RTL Deutschland, Bernd Reichert. <laughs> hey, Amias. <laughs> How are you? That was a nice introduction. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> um, it's a pity you should have been here. Uh, the event was about to be hosted in Cologne, um, and uh, now it's the webcam again, unfortunately. Um, but so a virtual welcome from, uh, from us as one of the sponsors. Um, thanks to the rest of the team, thanks to Hubraum and uh, Deutsche Telekom, Quake Europe, and all the other partners. Um, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here, um, and, uh, and it's a pity that uh, we can't be here on our premises and enjoy beautiful Cologne. <laughs> um, yeah, as you might all know, uh, the RTL Group and uh, Meeting Group in Germany is, uh, above all, a content company. Uh, we produce, we create, we aggregate content. Uh, and then we distribute it uh, via technology, and 5G will be a helpful distribution way. Uh, we distribute it to our, uh, to our audiences and, uh, and monetize uh, by selling advertising. That was uh, a pretty straightforward business model, uh, but it's getting more and more uh, complex. And when we get up on, on sunny days and uh, the sky is blue and clear, um, we convince ourselves that the strength of owning and creating uh, content will always give us a seat at the table. Um, whoever 
creates and develops technology will then come by and, and, and uh, give us a free ride on uh, technology advances because content will always be king. But on rainy days, when uh, the cloud is, um, when, when the sky is full of clouds, which happens every now and then, um, we make ourselves aware that we are now competing also with technology companies. And we have to become and be a technology company as well as a content company. Um, this is particularly true if we talk about addressable advertising, about, uh, about streaming, about owning infrastructure and be able to make use of uh, your direct customer rela uh, relations and, and learn about uh, consumption and about the way people consume uh, video. Um, so it is utterly important for us to understand and to be on track with technology and advancement. And uh, of course, 5G will be a huge enabler of technologies like AR, which, which of course we realize how important it is and what, what the game changer it could be for the experience and the customer experience of our, uh, of our video consumption. But it's always tricky and difficult to really bring it down to an operational level and really apply it to what we are currently doing. And this is so great that this startup demo day uh, already shows um, yeah, uh, my two favorite cases, where we see that, that with, with TaxSpace and Leo HR and NT, NTV and uh, SuperRTL respectively, we have those cases where we, where we are able to, ca to tackle and to apply uh, technology ideas and merge it with the power of ourselves as a, as a content house. Um, I'm a true believer that one of the uh, things COVID-19 really accelerated is the understanding and the necessity of partnering. Um, I think the old business mantra of make or buy is really that. The way of black and white looking at, at partnering, uh, either you buy or you make it, is just outdated by the possibility that we are so much stronger, so much quicker and so much better by quickly partnering up with uh, people who have complementary skills. And we are very much used of that in our content uh, generation process. We have to partner with screenwriters, with actors, with uh, creatives who invent formats, um, um, with authors. Um, so we are willingly and convinced that we have to bring that attitude uh, also to the market when it comes to understand technology advances and our relationship with partners. And I think we are a good partner because our essentials, which we impose ourselves and we communicate internally and externally, are creativity and entrepreneurship. I think two attitudes, two essentials, who fit very, very well with the spirit startups are showing us um, all the time. So um, without uh, any ambitions of consuming more uh, valuable airtime uh, and leaving the floor to the real professionals who pitch um, now their um, brilliant startup ideas. I will just like to tell Pia and Thorsten that in 10 years time, we will not be in Bonn. We will recover <laughs> the event in Cologne. We and will I see. hope <laughs> when once we got written of the virus in 10 years times, it should be, uh, it should be uh, the case. Then I hope uh, to have you uh, welcome here on site in our <laughs> premises. So good luck. Congratulations to all the work who has done before. Congrats to the initiators uh, and um, my regards from Cologne. <laughs> Thank you so much, CEO of RTL Medien Gruppe. And what a promise. And let me say it in the words of the Hülle der Löwen, that's a deal in 10 years. Okay? <laughs> we're coming over for All sure. Right, we're coming <laughs> over. And it's not far away. It's my hometown, hometown, but I love to be here in Bonn as well. So thank you very much, Bernd Reichert and Pia. Yeah, we are actually, I mean, of course, two great speeches, but now we are slowly getting to the really heart and soul, the highlight of today's day, because we also want to see the pitches of our startups, right? Um, we have a pretty cool tool for you prepared where you can follow all that on our hop in event platform. Um, but I will not um, try to explain how that works. I have a pretty cool colleague of mine, Michael, and he will tell you all about it in this small explanatory video.
Welcome to the Quake 5G Consumer Entertainment Demo Day. I'm just going to walk you through the Hoplin platform which we use for our conference. The first thing I would like to ask you to do is to check your profile to just fill out anything that's missing so you can start exchanging with others. That you can do here through the people section so you can see who is here and talk to them and start a conversation. You will also find here later in the event our polling tool. So when we on stage have the startups, you'll be able to go through it here. And then of course we have a general chat. So you want to ask anything, you want to exchange, you can do it here in the chat. Now let's go to the other parts of the platform. So here we first have in reception what this event is all about. Below we have our sponsors who is organizing this. You will find also a schedule. Please check this to see when the startups and when the different speakers are on stage so you won't miss anything important. The stage area, here you will see anything that's happening and we're gonna live stream this to you. And if you have any questions you wanna exchange, you can do it here either through the stage chat or the overall chat. Then we have a networking area. Here you can quickly meet new people by just clicking on this ready button here and we set a timer for around three minutes so you can easily find a person and then move on and see if you want to have a new conversation. Also make sure to check out the expo area. You can find through the tags the right booth for you. Go through all the partners and the startups. We are all interesting. Chat with them. And I'm just going to give you a quick example of one booth, in this case the Quake booth. Here you would see a preview video of something we'd like to show you, more information about the company. You can also use here again the chat, in this case the booth chat, to just ask questions or exchange. You also have a booth overview. So here you find for more information around the company. And if you'd like to know more, you can just click on this register interest button and we will get your email and be able to write your personal message. We hope that you will have a great time at the Quake Demo Day and see you there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. So more than 700 teams from Europe, uh, Australia and the US wanted to be a part of that 5G consumer entertainment program. But at least, and these are the last and the best seven fascinating application that shows us now what completely new possibility 5G offers us. So let's go. Ah, Pia, can you hear me? Okay. So what's next? But Should we start? I mean, this you know, this all sounds pretty flexible and fluffy, but we are in Germany, so yes. we need some rules. So of course, we're just not going to have random pitches, but we have strict rules. We are on time, we are punctual, we have strict rules. So the rules for our startups are actually not that difficult, though. Every startup pitch will have exactly seven minutes. So after those seven minutes, we will cut it somehow cut it cut, <laughs> cut it. it there will be music like uh, like like we we know it from the oscars it started very quiet and it's getting louder that true? and they know <laughs> <That's> okay all, <laughs> right. all right and after that we will have two questions addressed to every startup and that's where you also come into play because via the hop in platform and via the chat you will have the chance to type in your questions and we will be your voice kind of here in the audience yeah. and post that to our startups um I think I said it before, it's a hybrid event. We're here, but the startups are, um, yeah, will be broadcasted um, and they will, most of them have their pitches live. We have some video messages as well, but they will always be there for the Q&A interaction so we can address them directly. And one important thing, we first of all need you, of course, for the interaction as said by handing in the questions, but your, all, your opinion also matters at the end of the day because you said we already have seven rock star startups for sure, You're but we also want to have one number one at the end. So we're going to ask you at the end of the day to vote. So A don't- A 5G S20 Samsung smartphone plus 35K credits from Doodash. There you now go. you know. <laughs> all right. So, back to you. I think we're going to start now with, as I said it in the, uh, the, the, the entrance, so uh, we're about to start with, um, it's text space, right? It is. Is it, is it your action. part? Yeah. Let's right. play ping pong. Are you ready? So you start. <laughs> All right. So, 
first one coming up. The first pitch is from our startup, TechSpace. TechSpace drives engagement, traffic, conversion, and it, it uses location-based augmented reality for that. Their patented AR platform is really f the first one of its kind. The team consists of serial entrepreneurs, I really like that word, serial entrepreneurs, so ex-Sony, Microsoft, and video gamers. And it has a simple drag and drop creation tool that allows anyone to make their own AR experiences. So really, everybody can do it, I guess. And so a backyard, a park, a city, even an entire country can actually become your own AR space. It's a no-code tool, so also good to make that um, yeah, handle um, uh, able to handle for everybody, and you can actually create your AR experience in less than an hour. But I think enough of me, I will let them do the talking, but since Techspace sits in Australia and it is in the middle of the night, we allowed them to pre-record their pitch. So we'll see a video from them, but then we will have the live interaction with them, and I would like to give the world to Paul from Techspace. Welcome, Paul. Hello, everyone. Lovely to meet you, and thank you for being here. I'm going to start by taking us all the way back to last year, when we could go to events like this. Last year, TagSpace Augmented Reality helped dozens of customers with brand engagement and tens of thousands of event goers to find their way around more easily than by using a map, even after a few drinks. I'm Paul Martin, TagSpace's CEO and founder. Our B2B2C platform allows companies to create location-based experiences just like these in less than one hour, and no code is required. This year, we have doubled down on city experiences, and thanks to this fantastic Quake and Hoop Arm program, have added a whole new dimension to our offering. We're talking about big media, a $2.2 trillion industry that has the challenge of moving away from traditional business models, as well as capturing and retaining a younger audience who are mobile first and do not watch television. This is Generation Z, who have an eight second attention span, but are wizards at multitasking across multiple devices, which means media needs to shift from traditional long form content to something more engaging and instantly immersive. This is why our platform is such a great solution. We give companies the tools to take their existing content, but then re-visualize it as bite-sized chunks scattered throughout the world. Here's how it works. Users start in our creation portal by dragging and dropping pins onto a map for each location where they want content to be viewed. For each pin, they add images, videos, 3D animations, and descriptive text for that location. After they're done, they receive a publishing URL, which is all they need to integrate into their existing app or distribute via their usual marketing channels if they don't have one. End users then gain access via our app plugin, which is called Discover, and it's white label branded for our customers. The experience you just saw is live in Cologne and the first of its kind. Continuous city scale AR, including live streamed augmented video, is testament to the power of tag space technology and the Deutsche Telekom 5G network. Its high bandwidth and low latency features, combined with our own custom mobile EdgeX services, allows to do a couple of things much better. First, deliver greater volume and higher quality content than we've been able to achieve in the past. And second, improve the merging of the virtual world with the physical world. So what's the commercial impact for our terrific new partners who will shortly have TagSpace AR integrated into their apps? First, we will help Deutsche Telekom sell more 5G data plans and smartphones, as well as provide new engagement for their sponsorship partners. 
RTL Media Group will access more Gen Z users through a pilot that begins with their NTV channel and ultimately deliver content from over 60 others around Europe. We will help FC Cologne fans from the train station to merchandise food and beverage kiosks, their seats at the stadium and then back to the cars after the match. And for our ongoing partner Fever, we will help them sell more of their city experiences and increase click-through rates. Through integrations with these four apps alone, we estimate the benefit for these companies to be 274,000 users of branded AR experiences each month for a total of 7 million sessions, generating over 14 million clicks and around 55,000 hours of content viewing. Our business model is predominantly SaaS, but with a twist. In addition to a monthly licensing fee, we take 20% commission for advertisements that are placed within the platform. Our achievements to date are testament to the experience of our incredible team. We've been together almost five years, and we're ex-Sony, Electronic Arts, and Microsoft video game developers. We're also all serial entrepreneurs with multiple exits between us, including my previous tech company that generated over $100 million in revenue. All of our technology was built from the ground up for the best possible experience on all devices. It's 100% proprietary and backed by four patents. We've been tried and tested around the world in cities and at music festivals with over 10,000 concurrent users in 47 countries. So hey, what happens after today? Well, first off, we're working with Deutsche Telekom towards a commercial agreement for the first few deployments in German cities, then in theme parks and stadiums. We work with RTL Media Group towards a commercial model and to integrate their automated content pipeline into TagSpace. We'll continue working with FC Cologne to deliver the new fan experience I described earlier. And from there, we already have the relationships to deploy content to new customers in cities and sports clubs all around the world. Then, once big events reopen, we'll sell into festivals, events, and theme parks where we already have repeat business. And the cherry on the cake is that we're continuing to work with Hubraum on another program that will bring TagSpace AR to the new Nreal mixed reality glasses. In the near future, we hope TagSpace will be preloaded as part of a telecom 5G smart glass experience bundle available for the masses. So as you enjoy our last, uh, our last demo, imagine yourself watching it hands-free and always on. This is another brand new TagSpace AR experience that is now live in Berlin and commemorates the 30th anniversary of the reunification of Germany. Enjoy. All right, Paul, I see you now. Hi to Australia. You look Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> you look you look pretty awake for in the middle of the night. Wide awake. <laughs> Wide here. awake, great. So thanks for that great video. And you know what? I didn't know that you have in Australia that you have the Brandenburger Tor in <laughs> Australia. I've never heard about it. It no. looks great. <laughs> the Australian I'm right here in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul, as said, two questions to you. The first one is, do you have any user validation for the new city experiences? Yeah, actually, we certainly do. So just, uh, just recently, we got the results uh, just a few days ago. We, uh, we interviewed 200 uh, Gen Z users uh, around, the, uh, around the Cologne area. And uh, we've, we've actually had some amazing feedback so far. We've still got some, uh, some results coming in. Um, we've had, I'm just uh, looking at my notes here, 88% said that they would use our AR up to seven days a week. And 87% uh, and said that they would use it up to 10 times per day. And, uh, and the, the average break was 57% uh, female, 43% male. Plus, uh, we had 82 percent said that they would recommend tag space AR to their friends and family. So 
So we're, we're, we're looking pretty optimistic that, uh, that this is going to be a, a pretty good thing in, uh, in Cologne. And we're looking forward to rolling it out to the rest of Europe. <laughs> cool. I can recommend Bonn as a location, obviously, yeah. as well. Yeah. Pretty nice here. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. So it sounds like promising feedback so far. Uh, second one is, are you currently raising capital? We are. We've opened a smaller late stage seed round. It's currently 50% full. And if you're interested in participating, please come grab me at the booth and we'll have a chat. All right, sounds good. Thanks for that. Other than that, we have a couple of uh, remarks uh, saying such a trooper for getting up in the middle of the night. So a lot of respect for you <laughs> on that case. So thanks for being here. Thanks for your intro. And uh, to everybody, you will have the chance to talk to Paul later in the chat in the booth, as you said. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. And you know what? <laughs> There is Ali. Uh, ah, let me scroll up. Hold on one second. Ali Daniali is asking, are we able to ask <laughs> questions? Yes, of course, Ali, because it's not our event. It's an event also for you guys out there. So if you have any questions regarding to our um, startups, regarding to their content, you can ask your questions right in that area where you asked that question. <laughs> it's exactly um, on the button stage. Uh, just push that button stage and then type in your questions and we'll try to ask your questions straight to the startup. So make sure you're going to do that. So is it that now from Paul? That is it from Paul. Paul gets to go to bed now for an hour. <laughs> no kidding, Paul. You better stay awake and we'll talk to you later. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you very much. So we're about to continue with our next startup. So Proxy42 is the first social augmented reality platform for casual and competitive mobile entertainment. Their first game, Father.io, has 5 million plus users, generated 1 million revenue, and has been a top 1% starter, a Kickstarter campaign. They're presenting Circle League Live, a social AR interactive platform powered by 5G, edge computing, AR, and artificial intelligence, the next generation fan engagement platform for football clubs. A team of accomplished serial entrepreneurs, marketers, and AR veterans is backed by solar devices with sup uh, supporters from Disney and Logitech. Please welcome now Francesco. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> this is your applause, Francesco. Hello. Come stai, Francesco? Tutto bene, grazie. <laughs> Uh, tutto a posto, sì, sì, l'ombelico del mondo. So, <laughs> fantastic Italian. <laughs> well, I'll try my best. That's what I have done yesterday night. I just speak All a little night. bit Italian. Just practice but, Italian. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's it. You know, I, I can not you know present more Italian. I know that you can. And my question is, are you prepared for your next seven minutes? Of course I am. So, Pia. I'd say. Would you like to count down from three to one and then? <laughs> Uh, uh, Francesco can start. Let's, so, do, let's do that. I'm excited. Yes. Do so it. three, two. We can we can see a video. We can we can see hopefully a video, but we're listening to you. And we, we hear still, you, yeah. and we can see something. Perfect. All, All right. right. So, Francesco, three, two, one, go. Proxy42 is the first, uh, we are building the first uh, social augmented reality platform for casual and competitive mobile gaming. We connect fans, families, and friends within local communities through active face-to-face -face social augmented reality experiences. So this is the opportunity. Mobile gaming is growing 10% month over month, even during this pandemic. And if the battle for the four hour daily screen time Traditional sports and linear TV are losing big if you compare them with uh, mobile first experience and games. Why? Because consumer habits are changing rapidly, particularly with younger generation. The content has become highly interactive like mobile gaming and much shorter in time like the 15 second TikTok videos. Streaming game is now mainstream and e-sport is becoming as relevant as traditional sports. COVID-19 is dramatically accelerating these existing trends. This opens the doors for new opportunities. Our platform, Soccer League Live, supports sport clubs to engage with their fan base on a daily intra-daily basis with a unique immersive augmented reality experience. A fan base hard to get because don't look at TV. 
We also support Sports Club to monetize their fan base through digital collectibles, microtransactions, and gather super valuable data. So we created Soccer League Live, a location-based game where you have to go out on the street to collect football players and conquer opponents' virtual stadium and point of branded point of interest like shops and malls. Real and, digi and fi fictional digital football players uh, are around the corner, literally, like the Pokemon in Pokemon Go. You open the camera and catch them, and you build your team. And once you've built your team, you can play a 1 minute 30 super addictive gameplay with your family, friends, and other fans. It is real-time multiplayer experience. It allows users to video chat with other players and sports celebrities when they are playing the game face-to-face -face with augmented reality filters. Nobody's doing that. This is bringing the social AR augmented reality experience of Snapchat and TikTok directly into mobile gaming. And every week, the top players of the leaderboard will have a chance to play with VIP football stars in a weekly event, an event that will be concurrently streamed on all the social media channels of the football clubs. I mean, the Twitch, the Facebook, and the YouTube of each football clubs at the same time to reach an additional audience of 1 billion of viewers every month. So why 5G is relevant here? Of course, the game can be played on 4G, but 5G unlock reliable, ultra low latency multiplayer gameplay and streaming HD on the go concurrently on all the social streaming networks uh, just with your mobile phone and low latency video chat with the state-of-the-art document reality filters. More power thanks to 5G. And the greatest thing is, this is real, this is live. We built this in just few months from scratch. And the cool thing, as you see, is playing while video chatting in real time, remotely and locally, while concurrently simulcasting to Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, like you see in this video. So. Italy versus Germany, of course we already do that, with team from Ubraum and Thomas from MobileJX. So, how we will monetize uh, Soccer League Live? Through digital collectibles. User can buy and upgrade their team with virtual pockets of cards paid with real money. Wow. And branded power up to the revenue share with our partners. Let me explain our business model, super simple. Soccer League Live is freemium, means it will be downloadable for free on App Store and Google Play. We support clubs to engage their, with their fans uh, through social network, monetized by digital collectibles, native advertising, merchandising, and we will revenue share with them. We already closed an LOI with MobileGix and the Format Creation Group, the creative unit of RTL. And we are advancing conversation with Magenta Gaming, Deutsche Telekom, and exploring partnership with Kongstar. I'm also glad to announce that we'll have uh, the first use case uh, with FC Korn, the first football clubs. And we have also other leading clubs and federation in pipeline aligned with our value proposition and business model. These allow us to gather massive viral distribution channels. And as a projection, we can reach $300 million revenue with just 20 million of users, with near zero customer acquisition cost. So an ambitious project, and we have a great experienced team and top-notch advisor. A great track record with our previous use case, Fadario, think Pokemon Go meets Fortnite, we reach a $5 million load with near zero customer acquisition cost top 1% Kickstarter campaign and already positioned as the art market leader in gaming entertainment. To recap, we built a truly amazing uh, social augmented reality platform. We have a clear path to market and partnership for massive distribution already in place. During this program, we already raised 300K and now we are looking for $1 million to accelerate our go-to market uh, and reach our KPI for the next Series A round and implement our roadmap. Here's our master plan. We are deep in conversation with Magenta Gaming to bring Farder.io as the first XR cloud gaming experience on their Magenta cloud gaming platform. We plan this to be a long-term partnership. Uh, ETA is 2022 from our side. And in the meanwhile, with Soccer League Live, we will deploy the first test case in Q4 with FC Cone uh, ready to launch as Q1 2021 globally. 
We are also in conversation with Kongstar for a step-by-step go-to-market partnership. But 2021 is also the year of the European Championships and the Olympic Games. What if Soccer League Live could be used as a social media and PR stunt activity? Imagine if we can cooperate with Deutsche Telekom, RTL, and DiviMove, the largest European influencer marketing agency, to use Soccer League Live as an AR customer and fan engagement platform as a social media and PR stunt for the UEFA and the Olympic Games, a PR stunt that actually pay back. So this is the opportunity. We hope you enjoy it. Wow. <laughs> Francesco, you've been on point, and I think you at least how much time did he left? Was he on point with seven minutes? He, was, he finished earlier, right? Oh, he was on point? Okay. Perfect. So we didn't German listen tradition. to music. That means <laughs> he was definitely on point. Thank you very much, Francesco. So the Thank seven minutes are over. Uh, what makes your company competitive and unique? I mean, what differentiate uh, Proxy42 from other gaming companies? Well, this is a very interesting question. So it is. <laughs> And the market analysts, uh, including Bigcraft, uh, which is the leading uh, eSport uh, in gaming VC in Germany, forecast that the intersection of augmented reality, social, gaming, sport, and eSport will be the next big trend uh, and the next big thing in the digital space. And Proxy42, if you look what we are doing, is positioned exactly like that. We are at the intersection of an AR social network like Snapchat uh, and a gaming social network like Fortnite. With Father Yo, we connect people in real life uh, and make them feel empowered like superhero and part of an amazing community because they were playing first person one each other in real life. With Soccer League Live, we connect them remotely together and uh, football stars that they love, the icon and the idols, which is the perfect viral ideas for the COVID era. 100% enthusiasm with him, my God. But at least, maybe it's just a little bit of provocation, but uh, why should a football company sh should choose you instead of FIFA? Well, good question. Yeah. So it's about consumer habit, one, and accessibility. First, consumer habit. I played FIFA personally starting in 1996. And oh, okay. Was, yeah. Wait, way the back in the time. Song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was Blur playing song two in the game. FIFA is targeting an older audience of gamers like me that love photorealistic graphics and realistic gameplay. But new generation of gamers instead looks for casual entertainment like Fortnite and Brawl Star, game with cartoonish graphic uh, and funny fantasy short casual gameplay. Second, uh, accessibility. FIFA is very fought for PC and console. They sell tens of millions of copies each year, but 70% of their $1.5 billion revenue comes from microtransaction, not from selling the game. Now, accessibility. Everybody got a mobile phone. Imagine what can happen if you provide microtransaction option to hundreds of millions of users instead of tens of millions of customers because the game is all mobile and it's free to download. You don't have to play to access it. And as a final point, we do provide the tools for football clubs to monetize their social media effort. We'll exchange with them access to their fan base, uh, revenue share with them uh, in exchange uh, of an exclusive uh, viral organic growth. Dot S. Francesco, by answering this second question, it was another pitch that you've done. <laughs> it was very long, but now we know more about you and about your company. So thank you so much. That was Francesco. Thank you. Bye, Francesco. I think we still have to talk about this Italy-German soccer thing, but we'll keep, I, we'll keep it for now. We'll I remember the semi-final 2006. That was pretty hard for all of us. <laughs> Good for Italy, but <laughs> you know. what about the next startup <laughs> waiting in the pipeline? All right, yeah, we already see him here. So next up is 360 Stories. Well, what do they do? 360 Stories is a platform for interactive tours. So those tours are led by real-time guides virtually on the web or on your mobile device, of course, using 5G. 
And COVID has provided really them with a unique opportunity to, to disrupt a $255 billion market. So using 5G technology, 360 Stories provides seamless virtual live tour experiences. And the user can share that experience easily with their friends and family, regardless of their location, especially in those times, of course, a very big advantage. So please welcome Albert from 360 Stories with me. Albert, can you hear us? Yeah, yes, sure. he's there. Albert, where are, you, where are you located right now? I am right now in Armenia. All right, so very international group today, perfect. Albert, I would say if you hear us, we see and hear you. I would say your seven minutes start now. Perfect. All right. So, hey, I'm Albert, CEO of 360 Stores, which is a virtual live guided tours in VR and in AR. I know, guys, you this year you didn't travel internationally, right? Like most of us because of the COVID. But let me tell you the story of a traveler. Please meet me. Hey. Uh, I'm Albert. I love traveling worldwide. I am like a like a I love like paragliding in mountains, meeting people in Asia, and obviously I'm eager to travel this year. But obviously, right now I can't. So basically, I am looking into the three main issues once I want to travel now and once it is available in the near future. First is accessibility where I'm going to go, what is going to look like, how do these experiences changed already? Is it available already or not? The safety, am I going to Bali, for example, or Cambodia, what is going to look like there? Can I meet some strangers? Can I meet some uh, uh, in, in groups and go with them? And obviously the guidance, the, the things are changing so much. Can I meet the new guys? Can I afford a, a personal guide? So there's a lot of problems actually going on right now. So uh, our solution is the explorational tool uh, inside the pre-recorded 360 content with a local live guide. So the customers can select the guide, uh, they can explore, pre-explore the destination, see where you, they want to go, if there's interesting something happening there. The guide can help them to uh, book the trip and show them all the relevant experience. But once the, guide, uh, once the customer gets to the destination, they can explore the destination with augmented reality uh, app and they connect the same person they were guiding there to, to select and decide and discover the, the destination now on their phone and go with them all together. So basically we started with like a web-based experiences. Obviously we don't want to go into very much devices. So it's run on any device. You don't need any VR goggles. So it's run on browser. When we go uh, to our, um, and tour guides where we were partnering already before and ask them, would you use this? Like 600 of them registered within the, the time frame of three weeks. They created a ton of the tours. And what happens like uh, within one month, they generated 59,000 minutes of virtual tours. So you can see how it works here. But let me show you how it actually look. So uh, the, the 360 is a platform for the pre-recorded uh, virtual tour where you can go and walk with a local person. You can see each other. You can talk with the person uh, locally and that they can discover and show you interesting stuff like a storyteller. And also when we show this to the people at the beginning, they were like fascinated. They were like, oh my God, I could, I, I spent this 30 minutes out of my room. And obviously what is interesting about this business model, we don't have a go-to-market strategy cost as well. We're partnering with the big players and I will tell you a little bit about this more, but right now we're targeting to, to partner with Magenta VR, which is a huge platform in Germany. And we are going to partner for the content integration, but also to sell our virtual tours to the German market as well. So market validation, when we were like starting this, we were like, okay, is this going to work? All these virtual tours is like a huge market, but how this will actually work. So basically it goes from uh, third week to the uh, six week whole duration, uh, it job start rocketed. So it, within just one month, we generated 15,000 revenue and we believe this is going to rocket the same way for next couple of months. So uh, we are worldwide in 34 destinations. We have, you know, landmarks like uh, Eiffel Tower or 
Times Square, and we have a great top of museums like Louvre and MoMA and uh, Museum of Future in, uh, in Rio de Janeiro. We have a great partners like a Get Your Guide, TripAdvisor, and Lonely Planet. But what do we have special for partnering with Deutsche Telekom? 16 destinations are in Europe. So that's where we want to do our demo with the Deutsche Telekom. The market size, even though we are right now focusing on virtual live tours happening everywhere on a computer or mobile devices, but the real target for us is a mobile AR app, that the one that you can go and walk in real city. So we are targeting the tours and activities market, which is $255 billion last year. But what is interesting, 17% was online. Everybody in industry agrees that this number is going to double and we target AR mobile users, which is 500 million of them right now worldwide. Our business model works on transaction based, so we make 30% from every virtual tours right now we are working on. But uh, in the future, we are selling uh, uh, the real ticket to museum and, uh, and attractions, which is like billions of dollars, as I told you, and we're making 8 to 12% there. So how the 5G app integration with T-Mobile will work. So you can see on the screen here right now, it's like a virtual environment where you, uh, on your mobile, you connect FaceTime with a guide. Guide can see what you what is on your screen and they can help you to discover everything on the go, showing you where to go, what to do. So it's like a, we are offering to do with Deutsche Telekom a real demo in 16 cities, starting from April next year, leveraging 5G for travelers, giving a discounted ticket for the Deutsche customers, and even integrating with the main Magenta app. Our team has been working together for seven years, doing a lot of huge projects. In our previous company, we partnered with Google, who gave us like huge projects from like uh, uh, Time, uh, New York Times, uh, Coors Lights, United Airlines, American Airlines, and we have great advisors helping us on that road. So our seed round is 1.2 million, where we already closed 200,000. We are going to scale uh, the tech. We are going to hire more business development people, and we're going to publish 5G app with and real devices. We already have it here. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward for your questions. All right, applause from here, Albert. <laughs> Thank you for that, and uh, yeah, I can I can feel your urge to travel again. But I think until we're allowed to do that again, you came up with a pretty cool alternative. So thank you, therefore. I have two questions for you as well. Um, how are you creating this entire content worldwide? How is that done? That's a great question. We have this community worldwide uh, of the uh, travel guides and the 360 enthusiasts that is going to all those experiences partner with Get Your Guide and TripAdvisor. So that's how we create all this uh, content, okay. with the 360 cameras, people walking and going all of the destinations, museum and experiences. All right, cool, thank you. And then one more, you said there are no goggles required, but you said also at the end you have a plan to integrate the Unreal classes. How will that look like? What's your Basically, plan right now, when you are going to uh, walk in the streets, you will have your phone holding like that. With the AR glasses, you will have your guide always with you, helping you on any stage, on any walk, and then helping you, like totally replacing the, the, the real traditional guides in the future. But that's what we believe is the future of 5G on that uh, AR gla glasses in the future. All right. Sounds interesting, definitely. All right, anything else, Albert? To no. add on? No, thank you very good. much, we Albert. Have some great job and fantastic Thanks story in yeah. the, in the <laughs> chat. So I think we can copy that. So thank you very much. And of course, Albert will also be available to you later on in the chat and in the booth. Thank you. So what we're going to do is now we're going into a short break of 10 minutes, but to go into a break and we're going offline doesn't mean that you have to go. So better you stay with us right here and go maybe for a little bit of uh, networking online here on our 5G Consumer Entertainment Demo Day 2020 platform. You can do so many things, go into a conversation for perhaps, and we'll be back at 5.30 local time. Which is like... 20 minutes, but that's okay. So See ma you. math is uh, not just strength. I, I said, 10, said minutes. 10 minutes. That's okay. Double up, double up. It's so 20, tw minutes. 20 minutes. We'll be back here at 5:30 or whatever your local time is right now at half. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Not till later.
All right, welcome back here. So I think everybody virtually is probably there already. We're still missing some people here in Bonn. So I invite you guys also to come <laughs> back here to the seats. I hope you had a good break. A little bit of refreshing and getting your, your, your thoughts settled, but I also hope you use the chance to interact online and to virtually network. And one word maybe to that, to this entire virtual collaboration networking experience. Um, I, I said it before, this entire program, the entire acceleration program has been carried out virtually. And from May 2020 onwards, we had those seven startups working together in a completely virtual settings with their partners, with their mentor. And uh, I heard it was over three continents. They had three, uh, seven different time zones. So honestly, I, I think that's respect for that. And that's really a big achievement in itself. So what did we see so far? You still remember? Yes, I still remember. And uh, I got them here on the paper. So <laughs> we have seen them already. Tech space, Proxy 42, and 360 stories. So let's continue the story and the other four startups are already in the starting blocks. And don't forget, you, the streamers, the viewers, you can decide who's going to be the winner of our 5G uh, uh, Consumer Entertainment Demo Day 2020, this very special accelerator event. For just go on the right side of your screen. There you find the polls tool and vote for your favorite startup. But no. after we have seen the next four startups. So let's continue with our next one. And what can I say? Let's celebrate good times. Come on. <laughs> it's about dancing, dancing, babe. It's dance fight. All other dance competitions are TV based. Dance fight is the world's first head to head video competition platform for mobile starting with the focus on dance and quickly evolving it to include all kind of content created by Gen Z that are all up upgraded to real time. Live contents using 5G connectivity. 5G will enhance user experience, accelerate adoption, and enable multi-streaming real-time real -time competitions. Their strong team forming experienced founders backed by esteemed investors and adv advisors like Sony. Located in Las Vegas and Austin, please welcome all the way from Las Vegas, Rich. Hey, it's great to be okay. with you. I hope we can get you dancing. Let's light it up. Yeah, let's light it up. And I mean, what a perfect name for a perfect city. What a combination. <laughs> That's good. I like that. And honestly, if I would have had yeah, to I know, pick... I know we, we... <laughs> if I would have had sorry, to picture Rich from Las Vegas, I would have picked What happens here, here, but in this case... We want what happens here to be broadcast around the world on All right. 5G. Woo! Okay, so, um, Rich, are you, are you ready? To dance? So, so ready, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so your seven minutes in Las Vegas starts now. All right, let's do this. So this is Dance Fight, the next generation social platform. Our hypothesis is that you can enjoy incredible, unscripted competition content on TV, but if you're Gen Z, you're not watching TV, and there's no tailor-made platform where you can enjoy that kind of content in your medium of choice, which is mobile. Dance Fight addresses that opportunity by creating the mobile app Dance Fight, where we enable head-to-head -head competition and voting by the audience. <clears throat> we are starting with a focus on dance, but we rapidly evolved the platform to include all kinds of content that Gen Z might be interested in. And uh, the platform will evolve the entire brand in addition to the content offered. We launched this summer and started marketing in July. We were already featured by the editors in the App Store, which was really exciting. We are hoping that we get featured again soon. Uh, some uh, word would indicate that that may very well be the case, and we're, we're crossing our fingers and hoping so. The basic experience is a dancer creates a video, challenges other people to accept uh, their video challenge. People who accept the challenge appear side by side. The crowd votes on the one they like the most. The winners rise up leaderboards. They have profiles, all of the users, and can keep and share a catalog of all the dance fights that they've been in and accumulate followers and fans along the way. We are really excited about some of the early metrics we're seeing. People on average come into the app five times per day. This exceeds our expectations. 
people on average send three other people challenges each time they create a dance video. This is great behavior where our creators become our promoters. We are also seeing that we are successfully transitioning our users from passive viewers to active voters determining outcomes in the experience. Over half of voters now are uh, of uh, users now in our community have become voters. And showing intense intention, over 85% of people who come in from TikTok and Instagram fully register as users in the experience. We've got some amazing partners on board creating push and pull into the marketplace. Sony Music is an owner, but all three major record labels uh, are uh, licensing us with their full catalog. And uh, it's been amazing having Sony very integrally involved. We are actually in the Sony Music Incubator. They are introducing us to major artists that they represent on their rosters, including Kenzie with her eight plus million Instagram followers. And uh, K Camp, who had over a billion views on his prior viral challenge on TikTok. Pitbull is an equity holder in the business. Here's Tate McRae and Kygo, and many other artists are coming on board regularly. Uh, we have uh, the privilege and, and great value and benefit of working with the smart people at Hubram and Quake Capital and Mass Challenge to make sure that we're taking advantage of obvious opportunities. Uh, avoiding obvious mistakes and being as strategic as we can be. We also have some really uh, value-add strategic partners. Bonham Murray created uh, Project Runway and MTV Real World and Keeping Up with the Kardashians and is producing our show for Snapchat, which will go live on the Snapchat platform in the uh, February timeframe in Q1. It's just amazing to have a partner like that, by the way, also being monetized and, and generating early revenue. We're excited to be partnered with Deutsche Telekom and RTL and eyeing Q1 to do some amazing things with 5G connectivity and Dance Fight Live. And here in the U.S. currently, we are already collaborating with iHeart Radio. In uh, this, this quarter, in fact, this week, as you now know, we are launching the prototype on the 5G network. Um, that will be something that we roll out on a commercial basis in Q1 in Germany. We are also releasing the Android version in the U.S., so Android and iOS. And then integrations for Snapchat login and sharing will be complete this quarter. And then here we come to Germany and the rest of Europe, Asia, and Latin America. We launched that Snapchat chat original program and uh, a variety of campaigns for Dance Fight Live. We have a number of initiatives that we think can drive subscription, activation, interest, awareness, and we hope to become a huge contributor to excitement around 5G connectivity. We will work closely with uh, T-Mobile and RTL to pin down the details on that. And now with no further ado, 5G connectivity is enabling us to go beyond asynchronous dance fight creation and to do it in real time with no latency and uh, fully synchronized. So let's get to the demo. I just want to dance. Dance. I just want to dance. We are so excited to transition beyond asynchronous dance fight to real. All right, let's uh, let's jump out of the video. I'm with you.
That's perfect. I mean, you got me already when it's about dancing. <laughs> dancing and, like crazy here already. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw you moving a little bit. I love that. I did, huh? You, you saw that. <laughs> Jesus, I forgot that the camera's on. <laughs> and by the way, I like this uh, lip sync thing that you have integrated. That's right. Have, uh, have I seen that the right way? It's also lip syncing, right? So right now we are dance, but it, uh, but the, the great thing about the way we built this platform is that it is going to support all kinds of content. So no whether obstacles. it's skateboarding or basketball <laughs> trick shots or lip syncing, the whole thing. So what are you hoping to be the social impact of Dance Fight? What do you think? Well, obviously, these are, these are really extraordinary times. And we give people an immediate way to be together without having to be next to each other physically. And so we make that possible asynchronously in the current version, but with 5G connectivity, here we come, real time. We are together and the crowd is with us voting and reacting. And I think we can create a lot of cultural connection through the universal language of dance. Imagine someone in Mumbai competing with someone in Cologne. Uh, and having the whole globe participating. It's just fun and connective and really healthy. So you better step up your skills now when the Mumbai people are trying to, uh, you know, I, challenge you. I'm ready you. for this. I'm yeah. ready for this, you know. <laughs> and uh, that, yeah, finally, oh, last oh, question. That's, that's, that's all you got? <laughs> you mean this one here? It looks yeah, like, good. It, looks like good. it looks like <laughs> MC Hammer, right? All you right, remember that? Right, go. <laughs> you got it's me. Hammer you got time. me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Well, yeah. <laughs> so in your dream scenario, if you're looking from now to five years in the future, where do you see and what is your dream scenario for Dance Fight? Well, first of all, all of uh, uh, my colleague entrepreneurs and I from these various companies are all dreaming about that five-year picture. I guess for us, it would be to become the ultimate competition-based entertainment company on mobile with all kinds of content that you can enjoy in all forms, uh, delivered especially uh, in real time, but also asynchronously, but made real time through 5G. I think that's going to happen, and uh, this is going to be game changing. All right. Crossing fingers th that could happen. Yes. Thank you so yes. much, Rich. All the best to Las Vegas. Greetings to Las Vegas. Bye. Viva Las Vegas. Viva. <laughs> Viva! <laughs> sorry, Pia. All the time. All right. That happens, you know, yeah, yeah, music yeah, and too. dancing. Well. But we are next. So no dancing for the next pitch, but up is Marble AR. And Marble is building the first augmented reality platform for everyone every day. So maybe also something for yeah. you. We'll yeah. see. It's a location-based platform that allows users to create and share memories, information, and stories in AR. So you can do your little dancing here and transport it immediately to all your friends and family everywhere. <laughs> um, 5G will always be game changer for that because it addresses the, the high bandwidth and the low latency requirements. Marvel provides a unique opportunity for businesses to target their customers, and their team is backed by experienced technology and marketing entrepreneurs. From Marvel, we have Tom here on camera. Tom, are you there? Yes. Hi, I everybody. Yes, Hi, I'm Tom. Here. Great to be here. Tom, where, where are you joining in from? I'm joining from Karlsruhe, Germany. Uh, the company is in LA, but we cannot go there at the moment, so we stay at home. But a big advantage to you because we had many people here that you know had to go get up in the middle of the night due to time difference. So advantage on, on your side here. All right, Tom, are you ready Definitely. to go? Yes. And then I'd ready. say your seven well, minutes just... start almost now. They start now, Tom. Yeah, thanks a lot. So I'm Tom from Marvel, and we're working on the next evolution of the internet, which is a platform that allows you to place uh, memories, stories, and any kind of information in the real world. Let me show you how that works. Imagine you're at your favorite holiday spot with your kids, having a great time, and you want to keep that special moment in time. So what you do is you take out our app, push that plus button, and you get a so-called marble. This is like a virtual time capsule. You can open it and fill it with any kind of digital content. It could be a photo or it could be a video that you record right here. And this content stays here forever. 
So what people do with marble in the first place is saying, we were here, which is something that mankind did since it exists. And when we started this, we totally underestimated the emotional power this has. Let me give you another example. When we were at Textas Music last year, we hang out with the marketing managers of Metallica and Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, Doug and Miles, and we placed this marble at this Hollywood bar, uh, but we didn't think much about it. But when we came back a couple of months later, we were riding the LA Metro and you get a notification when there is a marble nearby. And this really felt special. Like you left something of your life behind. Now imagine that your parents had this or your, even your grandparents and you could literally follow the footprints of their lives. And this is how it would look like for my family. This is an ordinary street in Germany, but there's actually a marker for the birthplace of my youngest daughter. And we have a lot of these marbles now all around Europe. But marble is not only your personal scrapbook in the real world, it's also a collective memory of the world and a cool way for storytelling. We have this marble at this famous zebra crossing in London marking the Breathles Abbey Road cover, or we have a true crime podcaster from Ontario, Canada, and she places marbles to extend her stories. And for that, she also uses our web-based backend. Um, so this is pretty cool stuff. And uh, we're focusing on the user-generated side, but there's also auto-generated content that we use to pre-populate the world. Uh, so we have, for instance, this integration with a platform called Zillow. So you can go to any location in the States. And if there is a, an apartment or a house for rent, you can actually look at that. And it's even cooler if you go on the rooftop, like here in Los Angeles, and you see all those Zillow marbles in your neighborhood. So uh, there's a lot of stuff on one platform. How do we start this? Well, we start with this very simple and emotional we were here case. Then I found something for you, like a vegan restaurant. I tell you a story, like in the true crime case, or imagine Snoop Dogg would marble his neighborhood where he grew up, had his first joint, and so on. And eventually, any information delivered to you. And if you compare that to the existing digital platforms, this is what you would come up with. I'm not saying we're going to rule them all, but this is the marketing potential we're looking at. And over time, we plan to go over from the smartphones to augmented reality glasses. So this will be an always on experience. The business model is super simple because Marble is a world full of locations, people, and their interests in these locations. And out of that comes a whole bunch of business opportunities. Imagine Nike would want to promote a certain edition of sneakers so they place these marbles on top of mountains for people to chase for. Or like in that Zillow case, in the future, these guys will actually ask us to place their content in the real world and pay for that. We have a strong network. We started with Textos last year and it even got better and cooler with the new Hoopram and Quake Accelerator with Telecom. And why is this platform so important for 5G and vice versa? Well. We are the first augmented reality platform that lets people drop high bandwidth user-generated content. And during that accelerator, we actually created an integration so you can directly record videos and audios and place them right where you are. And uh, this, of course, calls for high bandwidth up and downloads. It would work in 4G, but it's way cooler in 5G. So I'm very happy to announce that we already planned a couple of campaigns and activities together with Deutsche Telekom to showcase this as one of the first AR 5G apps uh, for everyone and every day. And we start with the Magenta Moon campaign, which starts next week in Berlin. That's actually a roadshow where people can learn what is cool about 5G and it will cover all the German cities. And um, they, where they will do workshops and interactive experiences here. And after each of these events, we will ask people to drop these magenta moon marbles so they can uh, capture their thoughts and ideas. And we will encourage them to continue marbling all across the cities. And we uh, retarget them by placing 
hundreds of these marbles in the city so they get reminded by these notifications uh, to continue that. And as a next step, we plan to do a broader magic moments campaign together with social influencers, uh, which we would also love to uh, bring to the United States. So I would love to talk to the T-Mobile guys here, how we could explore this together. We have a international and diverse team. I myself uh, built up the European market leader for eLearning software before. Julius is uh, a social marketer. He created one of the first influencer networks for Instagram and TikTok. And I'd also like to mention Victor, who just recently joined as our fourth angel investor. He's ex Warner and uh, now at Twitch. So he's very well connected to both the music and the gaming industry. And together, we're going to shape the future of 5G on uh, uh, AR together. And I would love to invite you to shape this future together. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Applause from Bonn to you. Bonn to Karlsruhe. Tom, thank you very much. I have to say, my, my most burning question is the connection between a vegan restaurant and Snoop Dogg. So at some <laughs> point, you have, to t you have to tell me about that. <laughs> but that's not one of the official questions. So thank you very much. I think it's a really emotional, cool idea, especially in those times. Uh, but Tom, two serious questions to you. <laughs> uh, I can imagine, you know, of course, you want to increase the number of marbles people place. But how do you actually keep track of it? How do you declutter at some point if there are marbles everywhere? Yeah. Can it also be too much? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, we have a concept that we call layers. So you can think of it like YouTube channels or maybe onion shells in the real world. And the idea is that you place your content on these layers uh, based on your interests. Like the vegan restaurant, uh, because you mentioned it, this would be on the food layer. And Snoop Dogg may be on the weed layer or maybe just the music layer. <laughs> That's how we decide. Well, if you have the weed and the vegan, it goes together again, right? So that <laughs> now I yeah. get it. But sorry, okay, so it would be on the, on the uh, music layer. <laughs> yes, or the events layer, would not. Okay. All right, thank you. And um, another question, um, do the content creators, so I, I guess that can be really everybody, whoever wants to create that content, do they actually have to be in that place where they create a marble? No, they don't have to do that. I skipped that in the presentation, but we also have a web-based uh, backend where you can actually place the marbles on a map. That is actually what this uh, true crime influencer does at the moment because she's actually based in Japan, Japan now. So she places all okay. these marbles in Canada using that. So that works as well. And we also build that for these content creators and brand partners like Mikey and all these people because they won't want to go on top of all these mountains just to drop a marble. All right. So I like these marbles. Let, let's go play some marbles. Yes. Not yet though. Tom, first of all, thank you very much for those interesting insights. And of course, you will get the chance to talk to Tom later in the chat in the booth as well. Thank you, Tom. All the best to Karlsruhe. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. So I think uh, we should continue uh, with our sixth pitch. Uh, it's Leo AR. Leo AR is the leading consumer facing app for today. Leo AR allows everyone to create new environments using 3D ob objects and, and interact with the new worlds they create. Uh, Leo AR has been featured by Apple as the app of the day five times in the US and several times globally in over 200 countries. Um, most recently chosen by, to be in, very, in every Apple retail store in over 250 plus locations, 5G enables AR streaming and will accelerate adoption and new behaviors. Experience founding team backed by institutional investors, prior exit to Snapchat and revenue positive. So they prepared a video so let's check if they recorded it on time because <laughs> every startup got the same time. This is the rule. Okay, we got it's seven, very seven minutes. Very telling for a video. <laughs> yes. So seven minutes for Leo AR starts now. Hi, my name is Dana Loberg and I'm the CEO and founder of Leo AR. Leo AR is one of the leading leading consumer facing augmented reality apps today. We allow users to instantly modify their surroundings from swimming with sharks to dancing with unicorns or exploring planets and galaxies. My co-founder and I have 
built a couple companies here in Silicon Valley, California. We sold our first company to Snapchat. This is currently our second company in the consumer mobile space. And like I mentioned, in Leo Air, you can have these magical new worlds. You can create instantly in seconds. You can have flying unicorns. You can have dragons. You can have dancing astronauts or crocodiles. You name it, we have it. And it's one of the easiest apps for people to use. What Instagram did for photos, as far as taking bad photos and making them more beautiful with filters, Leo AR will do that the video space. So now you have more magical, creative, fun videos that people have never seen before. But we're really excited when it comes to COVID-19 and the idea that people are at home, they're isolated, they're depressed. And Leo AR really brings this new magical world where they can have all the outside world in their own space. So you're seeing a lot of kids from ages two to 10 adding these wild animals into their living room or playroom. Um, we're seeing the kids playing with the air objects like they're real. And we're also seeing a lot of family coming together and using Leo AR, whether it's the parents playing with the children or the siblings playing together as a group. It's a very social app. And it's a great way during COVID for people to kind of express themselves and create these new worlds that they want to live in because they're all stuck inside. And it doesn't look like it's changing anytime soon. And the other thing that we're really excited about with Leo is that teachers love to use technology now to incorporate into their lesson plan. So whether that's re-engaging kids around science or math or English, they're using Leo AR as a way to re-engage children around education. So Leo's been featured over five times by Apple as app of the day. And we've been also featured in over 200 plus countries globally. And then Apple's also requested that we be featured in every Apple retail store around the world over the next four years. We also have a partnership with Samsung as one of the leading consumer um, AR apps and their exclusive made for Samsung category. We definitely hit a critical point in Leo AR where we've built considerable amount of traction with zero marketing dollars. So we have over 8 million videos created in Leo AR. Over 70% are spending between one and 30 minutes on average five minutes within Leo. And we're seeing a 10% month over month revenue growth. So right now our current revenue is at 250K ARR. Um, and we're currently like to grow that to 1 million ARR. And we do that through the subscription. So right now the subscription for a year is 39.99 and there's an unlimited version for $49.99. 5G is really the next level of augmented reality. So right now we're limited by the technology of 4G, but with 5G, augmented reality will have better latency, better bandwidth, better shareability. People will be able to collaborate together. It's just gonna make all of our lives a lot easier and a way better experience for all mobile users globally. So one of the first projects we worked on that we were really excited about was how do we bring a real-time event and incorporate that into your mobile phone where you get a real-time AR experience. So right now we built a project where based on your favorite soccer team and their soccer goal, you get a notification when they create a soccer uh, goal and then you'll see an AR experience instantly in your phone. We also expanded this idea of like, how do we make moments more special? So for your birthday, we would send you a notification, giving you a happy birthday and an AR experience instantly in your camera. We also expanded this into Christmas. So how do you make Christmas more special for people? We would definitely create a mobile AR experience for Christmas. You get a notification wishing you a Merry Christmas and then instantly see uh, an augmented reality Merry Christmas. We also built one for New Year, so the same thing, you would get a New Year's notification and AR experience instantly in your camera to help you celebrate these special moments and make them that much more special. We also built one specifically for Germany because we're working with a lot of Germans now, so we wanted to create one for German Unity Day. So now you would get a notification around German Unity Day and then you would see a special AR experience related. We also worked with Super RTL and bringing in branded content into Leo AR. And one of their most famous characters was a squirrel. So we, we built all these dance movements and a new category within Leo to allow fans and children specifically to play with their favorite characters. Roller coaster style. I said a boom, chicka, woo. I said a boom, chicka, woo. And one of the final projects we worked on was with the FC Cologne soccer team. 
Um, as fans are not able to go to the stadiums during COVID, um, augmented reality is a great way to bring the outside world in, and especially for, for objects that are famous that people know and want to play with. Um, it was really fun project to work on to allow the fans to connect with their favorite teams and still have fun while they're at home and be a part of the celebration of their team. Um, the second revenue, the first revenue model we have is a subscription and the second channel of revenue is through uh, branded content. So we would have a base fee for the brand of creating the category, creating 3D objects, and then there would be a typical CPV cost on top of that. Um, I mentioned about our revenue growth is continuing to grow at 10% month over month. We're looking to scale that to 1 million ARR over the next year. Um, and we're currently raising a 1.5 million late stage seed round. We already have 30% committed. Um, previously, we'd raised 2.5. So we're really excited to continue to expand Leo to users globally. Um, and one of the most exciting things for us after working with Deutsche Telekom is all the opportunities coming in 2020. 21 related to the soccer championship match and incorporating AR into that as well as working more closely with their magenta sports team which includes more sports than just soccer as well as the magenta music so these are all ongoing projects that we hope to execute and work together and really show people the power of 5g and how exciting augmented reality is and how how much it will change all of our lives when it becomes more seamless and a part of our real worlds um, but if you have any questions please let me know i'll be at my booth and i'm happy to speak to anyone who's interested thank you so much for listening Th thank you so much thank you for your pitch and i think you're live now with us dana yes hi how are you um, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm. I'm in California. This is not my office space, <laughs> the background, but so, uh, I'm doing good. So as you said it, you name it, we have it. That's what you said. I have also something for you. Two questions. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you one question coming from Maya Barras or Barrett. Uh, great paid traction. Who has been your core paying customer for Leo yeah, AR? So for Leo AR, it's a pretty broad swath of users who love using augmented reality in their phones because it's such a new novel experience for everyone. So I would say it's obviously a lot of, of parents that are adults that are downloading the app and sharing it with their children. But the majority of people are, you know, between the ages of like 27 years old to 35 is kind of like the largest demographic for purchasing, but it's definitely a very broad spectrum from, you know, the 18 year old all the way to the grandparents that are purchasing Leo AR. So that's a huge range. Uh, so what kind of a technology are you most excited about in the AR space? Um, there's a lot of upcoming technology I'm really, really excited about. I think um, the capability of live streaming so people can collaborate together and creating these whole new worlds and environments um, will be very exciting. And also with persistence where you can start to leave tangible digital objects in the real world and have other people come by and see what you've created. And the third one I'm probably really excited about is, is AR glass. Like I think as soon as we move from mobile to glass and we have the ability for everyone to kind of see it more seamlessly standing up straight versus in the small window of the mobile phone. Those are kind of like the top three uh, innovations that are upcoming for AR that I'm like really, really excited about. I love that smile <laughs> that she's giving while she's excited telling excited about it. Us. You can tell. De definitely. Dana, thank you so much. Till yeah, yet. And you. please stay with us because we only have one more startup coming up. After that, there is the voting part. I know, Just to let you know. So for now, thank you, Dana. Thank you so much, Dana. Thank you. It was 6.58, 6 minutes, 58 seconds. Perfect timing. The Germans it was really like on that. point. It was Very really good. Point. Sad but true, we almost coming to the end of the pitch time, but no. we have one very smiling, happy face already waiting here. So one more highlight to come. Our last pitch for today, last certainly not least, is going to be Open Sesame. I think it's a very promising name. I would actually, you know, like a big curtain behind me. Yes. 
going up now, but you know, we don't have that. So very much looking forward to that pitch. And to sum up their idea in, in my own words, I feel like their goal is to bring back some joy and some fun. And I think we need that, especially in those times. So they're pioneering the future of social audio, audio experiences. And they really want to increase social connections between friends and family by singing karaoke. So I like said, much, much needed joy to bring back in social groups and regardless of their location, obviously, again. So they do that with their first application, World Karaoke, of course, used with 5G uh, technology. The founding team is, again, uh, very well equipped, ex-Sony, ex-Nintendo, BBC, Disneyland guys in that team. And I would say get ready to sing your heart out. So let me introduce to you Julian. Please tell us more about us. Hi, Julian. Hey, Julian. Hi, everyone. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Uh, I, I look forward to... Uh, singing and, and having a very fun experience. I, I thought so. You're probably going to sing your pitch to us tonight. Is that right? Oh, oh, completely, completely. <laughs> uh, so, I, and I'm looking forward to your, your host uh, rapping in a little bit. Yeah. But yes. How about um, that? I'm, I'm looking forward to that too. All right, Julian, if you're ready to go, I would say your seven minutes start now. And you're practicing your... Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. So, um... So obviously we're in the middle of the apocalypse, but what if I told you that we, you could sing, you know, like really sing your heart out and do it with up to a billion people? Well, that's our vision uh, for 5G. We want to use the extremely low latency that it's capable of to connect us when we're far apart. Uh, we're doing that with our first application, a voice first singing experience called World Karaoke that connects performers to listeners in real time over 5G technology through real-time duets. So let me show you an example. In this example, you hear someone singing Bohemian Rhapsody and you decide to join in. I mean, who wouldn't, right? Uh, and then let's see what happens when that happens. Join in. Duet. Ready? In three, two, one. Sing now. New singer. Easy come, easy go. Will you let me go? We will not let you go. Let him go. We will not let you go. Let him go. We will not let you go. Let me go. Let me go. New singer. No, 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 no. Mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma mia. Let me go. The air is the proof that the devil put aside for me. For me. For me. Out of space. So, so that's kind of fun, right? Um, what, what you saw there was two people, uh, four people coming together. Uh, they could be friends. They might not know each other. Expressing themselves without exposing themselves. The audience that we're going after has spent their entire childhood connecting through appearance, and they're quite frankly tired of it. And they're yearning for a connection where they can just be goofy and goof around. And so for them, if you want to look pretty, you go on Instagram. If you want to dance, you go on TikTok. If you want to sing and goof around, you go on World Karaoke with TikTok for voice. But our audience agree with us also in that regard. Um, and so with that in mind, we actually went and worked with RTL in the German market to see whether Germans like to sing. And they love it. Um, we also sat down with those same 20-year-olds to find out what they thought of the experience. And this is what they had to say. If you hear the bell ring, it's time. To say, welcome to World Karaoke. My name is Jonas. My name is Jonathan. Um, I'm 25 years old. I'm 21 years old. I'm uh, about to turn 23 in two months. What we are testing today is the concept of our station. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Clarkson, and this is the best part of your day. <laughs> you at? I like the duet. 
fun singing with many different people. This is maybe some really good um, examples for globalization and how it can work. Also, maybe encourage people to sing with others because they feel uh, confident because they are alone. But on the other side, they are still uh, interacting and singing together with other random people. So that's uh, really nice. Hot sauce. Yeah, boy. What do you think about this sense of humor that is uh, embedded in this application? Do you like it? This is completely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems to be super fun, especially uh, the voice and the visualization of the video. Yeah. I actually think the video is very catchy. No, I like it. Uh, <laughs> So obviously that's exciting, but can you technically do it? Now we're all about low latency. And as Torsten brought up earlier, the really key uh, benefit is that we, can t we tested this in Bonn and we can already do four, uh, six times faster than 4G. We then tested between Bonn and Berlin and we can four times faster. And then crucially, you on the 2.1 gigahertz, 50% coverage that you have as DT, we can do three times faster. So we can do this anywhere in Germany. Uh, and so the highlights of what I just said, um, we're trying to connect people in the new normal uh, over singing duets. We know an audience wants to do it in Germany and we know we can technically build it. So this gives Deutsche the role of the facilitator to increase that social bond and allow it to continue in the new normal. And we communicate that to an audience by saying, sing together when you're not together. And this is an example of how we could do it. Join in. You at ready in three, two, one. Sing now. New singer. Easy come, easy go, will you let me go? We will not let you go, let him go. We will not let you go, let him go. We will not let you go, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. New singer. No, 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 Now, commercially, how this works is we're a B to B to C play where we're added to an existing 5G tariff plan that allows us to showcase the possibilities of 5G. But as Torsten brought up earlier, we're also a great showcase for Magenta Music because we have amazing singing data. And that singing data in this example can be used uh, to segment audiences, drive them to particular things like Vacan, which then drive you to Magenta Music. But it doesn't stop there. We're looking to scale what hey, we're doing beyond Julian, Germany. Julian, you have to come to an end. Uh, and, and we can scale, uh, scale beyond that. So yeah, just to summarize uh, what we're doing, um, we're uh, s allowing people to sing together when they're not together. Uh, we're doing that um, by using extremely low latency of 5G to do that. And if you're the type of person who wants to bring us together, and bring some joy back to the apocalypse, <laughs> uh, then come speak to us afterwards. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Julian. Thank you. <laughs> Applause from Bonn. <laughs> and I feel like I'm, I'm going to use my co-host Amy's here either to singing or dancing. I feel like this is like your, la your last Mama moderation Mama after that. <laughs> <laughs> Going to do that full time. So thank you very much. Um, Julian, one question to you. You are based, or your team is based in LA. You did make some great progress with uh, Deutsche Telekom, RTL, SK Gaming. We've seen those tests in Bonn. So what is the strategy? You moving here or how are you going to plan to sustain that momentum? Yeah, so I, yeah, we wanted to personally thank Holger um, and uh, um, Daniel and the, and the entire Hub Brown team, Florian, Elena. We've really They've really been an amazing partner and allowed us to do all the testing. Also, Philip at RTL. So the big announcement 
is we're setting up our European division in Nord Rhine-Westphalia. Um, and so that allows us, as Tulsum was saying earlier, to this is a journey. Uh, we've been testing, we can do this. We're now seeing this through, and that's going to be our European headquarters, along with what we're doing in LA. All right, sounds good. And one more, um, of course, we've seen, we've seen this use case now with singing. I could imagine this being also possible to do with other things than karaoke. Is that right? Do you have any concrete plans there? Yeah, so, we, so we've already, uh, we're already funded at this stage. Uh, we really believe in this social connection um, over extremely low latency. Uh, and so the underlying infrastructure is already built. Uh, we're looking at a couple of other music applications and comedy and dating. And we have a heavy background in entertainment. So uh, hopefully uh, uh, your, your uh, co-host can also do some jokes uh, in, in the future. So. Comedy, comedy and dating, what, what do you She's think? also funny. <laughs> Mia can also Thank tell you. a couple of jokes. It's not well, we'll, see about, we'll see about it. I'm out of the dating market, however. <laughs> Nevertheless, Julian, thank you very much. And of course, also, you will be available for, for questions in the booth later. Thank you. Talk Thank to you, you later. Bye-bye. Wow. So what we can say now, at least at this point, we can say thank you very much for your presentations and for your visions that you shared with us uh, for today. Seven mind-blowing startups that took their time, I think, to flash us. So this is your applause coming from us again. Come on, give me a warm applause for all the seven startups out there. Thanks for sharing your time with us. Now you can breathe in and breathe out and relax a little bit because I would like to introduce him. He's not only one of the partners of this beautiful event and program, the founder and general partner has over 20 years experience operating and running a variety of uh, private, pre-IPO and public technology companies. He has founded over, over a dozen startup ventures resulting in three public offerings, nine exits and billions in shareholder returns. His background includes uh, expertise and projects in software, firmware, middleware, hardware, enterprises, SAAS, consumer goods and web and mobile applications. Oh my God. <laughs> Please welcome him, ladies and gentlemen, founder and general partner of Quake, Glenn Argenbride. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Glenn. Everybody. Hi, Glenn. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, I, when I got into technology 25, 30 years ago, it was the internet was coming on and I saw how it was going to change lives and create opportunity. And I thought equality of opportunity is really what the internet brought about. It brought access to every library everywhere in the world. And I think 5G is going to bring access to everything else. Now you can go to every great museum. You can see all the, um, you know, somebody earlier was saying content is king. Now you're going to get the richest content. And so I'm really excited. And I've been doing this a long time, obviously, and uh, those were some amazing presentations. I actually um, took some notes. We're going to get to the um, audience voting in a minute, um, but I just wanted to recap a few things um, because I thought it was pretty amazing. I'm going to share my screen real quick, go to some slides. So apologies for this. And here we go. So. If we're looking at the teams today, we heard from a company that's already secured partnerships with Airbnb, TripAdvisor, uh, Get Your Guide, Amazon, uh, and they have a key app integration underway with uh, Deutsche Telekom's Magenta VR, which is huge. Uh, another team reported adding 7,000 new subscribers, inking a game-changing deal with uh, Snap, and oversubscribing their $1.5 million funding round and more importantly, all within 60 days of launch, which is just incredible to me. Um, another team's flagship product has been featured an amazing five times as the app of the day in the app store with over 8 million videos created uh, and 10% month over month revenue growth, despite already being a very mature um, business in terms of startups. And they've raised over two and a half million in capital. And still others are revolutionizing travel and hospitality, navigation, tourism, connectivity, and I think importantly now remote learning, which is going to be a huge market, obviously, with all that's going on in the world. Um, and these groups have deals in place with big brands, huge brands in sports, media, entertainment, and tech, names like um, Amazon, FC Cologne, Sony, Universal, Warner, and many, many others. So while we wait for... Um, 
bringing up the, the, the voting here, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Quake and our background, talking a little bit to um, founders who are out there. We launched originally in 2017. Uh, we are now on our third fund. We've made a little over 200 uh, investments in that period of time, and we worked with over 400 founders. Um, we've been through that period of time. We've received a lot of accolades. I'm really proud of the work our team has done, but predominantly through the work that our founders have done. Um, we've been recognized by Forbes as one of the top 10 lead investors and one of the top 10 seed investors worldwide. And Crunchbase ranked us as the second most active investor for female founders. And interestingly, yesterday, I'm really excited. Um, Crunchbase recognized us again. We we're the number four in the United States, one of the top five um, for investing in black and Hispanic founders. Uh, and that's uh, you know something we're very proud of. We've, we've um, made a conscious effort through the years to really focus on, again, equal opportunity for everybody. So I'm really excited about that. A couple other interesting stats for us. We look at about 800 to 1,000 teams every month. I think it was mentioned earlier here, we looked at about 700 teams for this program because it's a very focused niche. And um, we, we kind of scrubbed the globe looking for anybody and everybody who is working on immersive media. Um, we take under 1% of all the teams we look at. So it's very, very difficult to get in. You got about five times a better chance of getting into an Ivy League university or a top university anywhere in the world. And we take very small cohorts, only 15 teams at any one time. This allows us to really work closely with our teams. Um, we're on our 14th cohort now, and we're working four cities. Um, historically, we've worked uh, actually in those cities. Now, obviously, we're doing things remotely for the time being. Um, but we work predominantly in New York City. We've got a flagship office there, then Los Angeles and Austin, Texas. And then now also, and we were very excited to come to Cologne, trust me, we're going to get back and we're going to be there. Um, but for now, we're, uh, we're doing this program remotely. Um, we typically, across our three funds, perform at a very high rate. Again, this is all thanks to our founders and our team. Um, our funds perform at around 30% internal rate of return, um, 1.40 a multiple on invested capital. For those of you in venture, you know what that means. For those that are not, it basically means we're in about the top 20, 25% of venture in terms of performance. And again, all credit goes back to the founders. The biggest thing probably I'm most proud of with Quake, aside from our diversity and the fact that we've been kind of leading the way in terms of equality, has been to provide for um, you know success across our founders. And we've had fewer than 5% of our teams fail over the last three years, um, which is a pretty astounding um, stat when you look at failure rates in startup. So that's us in a nutshell. Um, before I turn it over though, I'd like to just say a few thanks real quick. Um, to begin, I'd like to thank Hubram, who is really, I kind of joke, our partner in crime. Um, they are, uh, they deal a lot with early stage startups as we do. Um, and they have a lot of experience working with those teams and they were a huge assets to the program. And the participating teams um, and, and Quake are very grateful for their support throughout. Um, as you might expect, there are a ton of other people that come into making a program like this work. They pour their heart and the soul into the program, um, but none more so than the teams from Deutsche Telekom and RTL. And I'm talking about their extended teams. Um, there are far too many people to list, but I want you all to know how much you contributed um, to this program and how much better each of the teams is for your involvement. I mean, one of the things that's amazing about this program is you just couldn't hope as a startup to have access to the kind of talent that these teams are surrounded by. There's simply no other place in the world where startups could get that kind of um, access to um, expertise and insight. Um, I'd also like to call out our other key sponsors, Mobile EdgeX, SK Gaming, FC Cologne, NRW Invest, Deloitte, and DoDash. Um, they all contributed a wide variety of resources ranging from personnel, services, software, and industry expertise. And so that um, was huge as well. Um, finally, I'd like to single out our amazing staff. I mean, they've worked in, I think it's been said a few times, there were seven time zones. So this was a real uh, strain on some resources, and particularly human resources. So I'm really excited um, um, and happy and proud of our teams. And in Los Angeles and Cologne, particularly work together to bring this program to life. Um, the work they've done with these teams is phenomenal as evidenced by those amazing presentations you just saw. Um, Priscilla Pesci uh, is, uh, she came to me about this program in late 2018. 
Um, for those of you that know Priscilla, many of you do. She's kind of a force of nature. You're not very, it's not very easy to say no to her. It was her relentless determination that made this happen. Um, I'm incredibly grateful for the work she and her team has done. I don't want to steal her thunder. I know she wants to thank her team. So I'm going to stop here and I'm going to turn, uh, uh, turn the mic over to Priscilla, the head of our global operations and uh, outside of the United States, the head of Quake Europe. Priscilla, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Glenn. Uh, what an exciting day. Uh, just amazing. Um, in the words of German philosopher, Arthur Schopenhauer, talent hits a target no one can hit. Genius hits a target no one else can see. However, in 2020, in the world of reinvention as we know it, I think even this brilliant philosopher would have seen the world very differently. As a collective of partners with Hubram, Deutsche Telekom and Median Group, RTL, we have made bold moves and swift actions in order to see this time as a unique opportunity to virtually change the world. We at Quake are so deeply proud of our extraordinary teams, those who have dared to pioneer a new world of connection and innovation through 5G. You are truly the best and brightest, and we applaud you with your unwavering commitment because we know how hard you worked. <laughs> To our numerous partners, sponsors, mentors, and advisors, and on the, the slide, uh, there we go, perfect. And on behalf of our managing director, Parul Madan, who was absolutely incredible and critical to the success of this program, we thank you for embracing the future in advance and for catapulting the bigger vision. To the Quake team personally, I cannot express my admiration for your pursuit of excellence in side-by-side -side stride with all of our partners and supporters, namely Parul, Kai, Mikhail, Mark, Haunan, Olivia, Sumai, and managing partners, Amy and Jason, and a profound thanks to our founder, Glenn Arkenbright. Thank you to all. Believing you can change the world is not naive. It is instead a true necessity. Thank you again with deep gratitude for celebrating with us today and for demonstrating that dreamers can indeed reshape the world and are the true trailblazers of our future. Truly, we could have only succeeded together. Thank you so much and back to the moderators. All right. Back to us here in Bonn. Thank you, Glenn and Priscilla, for the background and also for those impulses. Thank I was you. just exactly. Of course. Woo! And I was just going to say that was probably an applause also as a representative for all the startups because I can imagine they're being pretty, pretty thankful for your guys' help and support. And we can also see that in the chat. Almost everybody said thank you for the last great months to all the sponsors, mentors, and supporters. So, yeah. Now. Is it the time now? It is the time. Are you excited? <laughs> it's the Keep final going. countdown. It's the final <laughs> countdown. And now it is up to you because we need your vote now. You have been listening to all the different pitches throughout the afternoon, or the afternoon in Bonn, whatever time zone you had over there. And uh, we're pretty sure you have chosen a favorite in your mind as well. And now is actually the time to tell us. You will see a poll, I think you see it up now already, on your right screen, now. pretty easy, where you can actually select one startup and only one startup. You will have two minutes to do that. And I mean, needless to say, all of those seven teams have achieved so far by being selected out of this mass of 700 applications. No doubt about that. But nevertheless, we want one number one today. Definitely. Tax base, proxy, 42, 360 stories, Marble AR, Dance Fight, Leo AR, and Open Sesame. And only one of them, the, uh, 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 as they are the winner, can win this one here is the S20 5G Samsung smartphone and a 35K credit by Doodash. So um, as you said, make sure you select the right one because once you voted, there is no turning back. You voted Definitely. already. So <laughs> right. the two minutes. Start now. Go for it. Two minutes time for your vote. And after that, we know who's the most convincing 5G pitch 
for today. And Amy is going to be quiet now so people can focus on really? their selection. Okay, that's my biggest problem. <laughs> Do we have Finished. a winner? That is the big question. Oh. <laughs> Do we have a winner? Maybe, hopefully, but actually this is the moment where we're all waiting for, ladies and gentlemen, the whole yeah, world. <laughs> Be ready, because in a couple of seconds, Pia will announce who's the winner of the 5G Consumer Entertainment Demo Day 2020. Pia. And it is. <laughs> All the way from Australia, oh. Paul and his team from TexBay. TexBay! We should go from here. Congratulations, TexBay! Paul Martin, TexBay, the one who started at the beginning. Exactly. Oh my God! But people didn't forget. They actually paid attention. Stayed alert. Like, Great. Yes. So congrats to Australia, Paul. Can you hear me? Because I'm calling you right now with the S25 G Samsung smartphone, think, no? Yeah, yeah. He's Sorry, this one is yours. So congratulations, and I think this is now the time to say the thank you. The sad time. Sorry, what? We have Lasse in our ears Lasse. <laughs> in case of we don't know what to say. And Lasse said something at that time when we were speaking. So I don't, Lasse, would you like to repeat it? <laughs> the given announcement. That means to <laughs> announce... One more time, One more the given. Lasse, <laughs> I we did, did it already. Lasse just didn't pay attention. But, <laughs> Amy, what is the what is the and of the course, price yes, for the being price the first is place? This smartphone, uh, smartphone 5G S20 from Samsung smartphone. This one is yours, and the 35K credit from Doodash. As you can see right now, making startups investable. Now and you know. There you go. It's My going God. all over the ocean to Australia now. But let us say it's not only one winner. No, it's definitely, definitely not. So thank you so much for, for joining us for today. Thank you. But just because we are saying now goodbye doesn't mean you have to hop off. Hop in still, please, right? Stay on that platform, exactly, because the official part here was over now. But we invite you, of course, to really stay on the platform. Use the chance to interact uh, to in those different booths. There's a virtual expo. So use the remaining hours now and get all your questions asked. Try and test and yeah. converse, yes. And of course, celebrate a little bit as well. Yes, we're going to celebrate right here in Bonn. Have a great day. <laughs> Goodbye from my side. I'm gone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>